Welcome to the broadcast and live stream of Moonshot Radio. Moonshot Radio is generously sponsored by the PNC Grow Up Great Program. And here's your host, Dr. Nivia Torres. Greetings and welcome to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, Executive Director of the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, also known as KRC. Our vision is that all children in Indian River County will be ready for kindergarten. We proudly partner with the Moonshot Moment, who is transforming the next generation in Indian River County by having 90% of all students reading on grade level by the third grade. With me today in the studio is Colleen Phillips from the 211 Helpline. Welcome, Colleen. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here today to talk about an important resource in our community. But before we get started, let's learn a little bit about you and your background, Colleen. Sure. Yeah, well, I'm actually originally from Columbus, Ohio. I moved to South Florida in July of 2014, and I had some various experiences. My background is actually in nutrition. It's my bachelor's degree. But then I actually went on to um, work in several hospitals, and I decided, you know, I really want to be proactive and working with more community health initiatives. So I went back for my master's degree in health education. Education. From there, I actually lived in New Hampshire at that time, and I was um, coordinated with a senior internship down in South Florida with a nonprofit in um, the Lauderdale area. And I decided that I really wanted to work one on one with families. Mm-hmm. And from there, I was connected to 211, and I've been their community relations specialist in the Treasure Coast for over a year now. So, yeah, it's been a wonderful experience working with families and letting them know of our programs and services and, again, collaborating with a lot of the agencies and partners that we have in the Treasure Coast. So it's really been a wonderful experience. Well, thank you for being a great resource to the community, Colleen. So let's get right into the 211 helpline because we want to make sure that our viewers and our listeners really understand about this important resource in the community, 211. I think when you hear 211, you might relate it to another Number. So help us understand what is the focus of 211 and how is that different, for example, from another number that you might dial? Absolutely. So 211 is fundamentally a community helpline and a crisis intervention hotline. So we actually help residents in the communities we serve, which is a five county area, locate community based resources mm-hmm. that are available to them 24 hours a day. So we are kind of that gatekeeper to get people connected to the services that when they're in a time of crisis or feeling overwhelmed and don't know where to turn for help, we're that easy to remember three three-digit number with live representatives all times of the day or night to be able to find those resources for them, taking that guesswork out to get them the help that they need. And when you say overwhelmed, um, overwhelmed emotionally, overwhelmed with just, you know, all these things that I have to handle, I guess I'm trying to establish a distinction of when you would call 211 and when I would call, for example, 911, if I'm feeling overwhelmed, how do we make that distinction? Absolutely. So what we find is that there's a lot of uh, community residents that will call 911 stating that, you know, they've recently been evicted from their home or that they have no food in their home or mm-hmm. that, you know, their uh, maybe their partner hits them at night or any sort of serious issue. Um, our law enforcement agencies are really there for medical intervention and crime intervention. Okay. So those types of human services and social service calls should really be coming to 211 because it alleviates for them the the things that they really need to be doing in the communities that we serve. So we can get those people connected to agencies like the food bank locally or, you know, different domestic violence shelters or, you know, child care and tutoring services. So it's really a win-win for our community residents to understand what's available to them and not have to um, really lean on our law enforcement for questions that are really not appropriate for them. They should be coming to 211 as a community helpline and crisis line. So I want to restate that again, because I think that's very important. If Mm -hmm. if it's crime related, if it's a medical emergency, by all means, you need to dial 911. Absolutely right. Absolutely. And if you're overwhelmed by just, you know, your bills, you need some kind of assistance and you're looking for social services, some coaching, some counseling, emotional support, emotional support, then you should dial 211. Absolutely. We are that health and human services hotline. So anyone that's looking for, you know, just anything related to food banks or job security, um, emotional support. You know, we have an impending storm coming our way. If they want, you know, any alleviation of anxieties around a storm or natural disasters, we are 
that community helpline and crisis line. So it really does alleviate again, you know, what our law enforcement's doing in the community, because if it is truly a medical crisis, you're gonna wanna pick up the phone and dial 911, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But certainly for anyone that has more of a social service call or maybe feeling anxious or anxiety or depressed, um, you know, maybe contemplating suicide, you know, we are that line to be there for you 24 hours a day. Oh, excellent, excellent explanation, Colleen. Yeah. Okay, so if someone dials 211, mm -hmm. Who picks up the call and what can I expect? Yeah, so when you first dial 211, there's going to be an automated um, system to let us know what type of call is going to be coming in. You know, mm -hmm. obviously we are the crisis intervention line, so anyone that's contemplating um, suicide or really feeling in that deep emotional stress, we want to know what type of call our call center is going to be receiving. So our crisis line is actually the one line that we answer first versus our community helpline, someone that's just looking for, you know, the nearest food bank or something to that nature. You know, we're always going to answer the crisis lines first to get people the immediate help that they need. Um, but once we get through the automated system, there's a brief hold time. Typically, it's around 60 to 90 seconds, and a live representative will be on the other end to speak to you about any of the concerns and connect you to his services where appropriate. Now, you mentioned the Treasure Coast earlier and, mm -hmm. and the counties, so forth. Could we repeat that again, just the reach um, and the service areas that, that you're um, supporting? Absolutely. Colleen. So 211 is actually a national initiative. So we're actually broken down by county within the state since we are national. We represent the local chapter for 211 here in South Florida. So that is Palm Beach County and it's the Treasure Coast. So that includes Martin County residents, Port St. Lucie, I'm sorry, St. Lucie County, Okeechobee County, and Indian River County. So if you live in that five county area, you can pick up the phone and dial 211 any time of the day or night to be located at our resource specialists. Now, we do have some sister counties near us. So 211 Broward is another sister 211 that we have. Um, that's in anyone obviously living in Broward County. Miami Dade has their own 211 chapter as well. Also in Brevard County. So if you go north of where we are in Indian River County, we do have a sister um, 211 there. There's actually over 20 in the state of Florida alone. And like I said, we do have that national reach. So for anyone that does have, you know, family members living out of the state, they can certainly pick up the phone and dial 211 and it'll locate their community resources to them too in the local 211 chapter. I think that's important, the fact that 211 is national yep. and that people understand that this service, this community service outreach is really available to them, whether they're here or whether they're in Connecticut mm -hmm. or Massachusetts, where, wherever that might be. Absolutely. We find a lot of times that people are living in South Florida, maybe part time out of the year, whether they're retirees or they have adult children that live out of state. So anyone can utilize our services across the country. Um, 211.org is our national um, website. So all you have to do is type in your zip code of where you live and it'll pop up your nearest 211 chapter there. So when people actually dial 211, if you live in the Treasure Coast, you're mm -hmm. getting a 211 specialist that is located in the Treasure Coast and has access to these community resources and services? How does that work? Yeah, so our headquarters are actually down in Palm Beach County. So okay. we're based in Lantana. We've actually been there since the 1970s. Um, and actually over the years when we've gained additional funding, we have expanded our reach into the Treasure Coast. So currently we actually don't have a brick and mortar location for our call center. All of the calls will go down to our Palm Beach County okay. location. But yes, so that is exactly right. So anyone that lives in Vero Beach, for example, if they pick up the phone and dial 211, it's gonna go to our headquarters that's down in Palm Beach to reach our live representative there. And our database is full about 1,500 agencies at this point of all across the uh, communities that we serve. So it's a really robust system that we can always find people to help and support that they need in a difficult time in their lives. Let's talk a little bit about the database and those resources. Sure. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah. Um, how do you get them to be part, these agencies and these partners, to be part of that database? And for those people who are probably not part of your database, how can they ensure that they're part Absolutely. of it. Absolutely, so that kind of speaks to what I do in community relations with mm -hmm. 211. So I am the community relations specialist for the Treasure Coast. So when I go to different task force meetings and things like that, I'm always hearing of new programs and services and things going on in the community. So it's kind of my job to actually approach you and let you know that we are available as a free community database that we can send referrals to you where appropriate when we get those calls in. So all you have to do is connect with me um, with my contact information, or you can just go to our website, which is www.211 one treasurecoast.org there's a tab on our page called partners if you were to click on that there's an add inclusion um, tab there that'll give you all the information to list um, on our free database with any of the programs and services that you offer and we have been bringing up the website Colleen so oh, that our audience can just 
So yeah. use that as a reference source. Yeah, right? and so we want to be really oh, that robust community database. So again, it's not a pay for play. It's everyone. We want to get people the help that they need in these difficult times. So there's no cost to be associated and listed with us. So Colleen, I'm feeling overwhelmed. I need some help. I dial 211, but I'm not an English speaker. Who can help me? So we actually have fluent Spanish and Creole translators available on our phone lines now, which is really wonderful. So you actually do not have to be a primary English speaker to utilize any of the services that we offer at 211. So we do have those translators available on our phone lines as well to help those individuals that are not that primary English speaker in our community, which we find very often. And it just it just a thought struck my mind. So is there are there hours for the two one one line or can I dial the two one one line at any time? Twenty four hours a day, 20. seven days a week, okay. three hundred and sixty five days a year. I will tell you though that we do have some other ways to get a hold of our representatives. One of them happens to be chat through our website. That is only available from ten AM to eight PM for that. But you can certainly pick up the phone, dial two one one any time of the day or night, and we will always be there, which is great because we know that coming into the holiday season, there are people that struggle with being around their families or feeling anxious. And maybe in the middle of the night, they could have had a fight with a spouse and they just want to talk to a third party person. And we are absolutely there 24 hours a day to talk to you through any of the needs and, and get you the programs and services where we find are appropriate or even just to talk. So support is not only through dialing 211, but mm -hmm. I can chat with someone from 211. Is there any other means of communicating with someone from 211? Yes, there is. There's actually four ways to get a hold of our representatives, okay. which is wonderful. So not only can you pick up the phone and dial 211 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, you can go to our website again, which is 211treasurecoast.org. There is a chat now button in the middle of our page, and that will pop up like an IM screen to our resource people um, at our headquarters that they can converse with you um, through the internet there. You can also text us now, which is really wonderful. Oh, so you can text okay. us at 898-211 with the zip code of where you live, because again, we handle five different counties. So we need to know the nearest resources available to you. So we will ask for your zip code. And then you can also email us, which is the last way. So you can email us at help at 211pbtc.org. Now, there is a 24-hour to 48-hour turnaround time for us to check our email boxes to get back with you. So it's not necessarily the quickest way to get a hold of our representatives and get the resources you need, but you can always text, chat, or call us. I love that because sometimes people are a little hesitant about having a conversation. So whatever means is most comfortable to them at yeah. least they're reaching out and they're getting that support calling and so that's, that's exactly important. right we do we get calls a lot of times and texts from teens you know teens nowadays don't want to pick up the phone and no. talk to someone they want right. to just text, text and that's their way of communicating you know and also for people that are in domestic violence situations you know they may find themselves in positions that they cannot physically speak to a representative we have over the phone to get some guidance and support that they need so again that's why we have these versions of nonverbal communication via chat or text available to our residents. Oh, that's a that's a great point. Great yeah. point, Colleen. We're going to take a break to hear from our sponsors and we will be right back. Welcome to the broadcast and live stream. At the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, our vision is for every parent, regardless of income or zip code, to have the knowledge and tools they need to raise healthy children that are prepared for kindergarten. Our mission is to support our partners in developing a high-quality early childhood system that is family-centered. Our outreach and parent engagement specialists connect with families and build trusted relationships. KRC has chosen Felsmere and Gifford as our two focus areas in Indian River County. Our Felsmere office is located downtown in the city annex, and our new Gifford office is located within Victory Park Apartments. Our administrative offices are now located adjacent to Healthy Start and Treasure Coast Community Health in Vero Beach. The Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative, developing a high-quality early childhood system for all children in Indian River County. Everyday activities are great for finding moments for talking and teaching new words. Babies' brains grow 80% in the first 18 months of life. As parents and your baby's first teacher, you can help build their brain with language and literacy skills. Involve the whole family. Ask questions. The more words babies hear, the larger their vocabulary can grow. Support early childhood education by talking, reading, singing, and family engagement. This message has been brought to you by PNC Grow Up Great and the Florida Grade Level Reading Campaign.
Okay, folks, we promise we go live to our thrifty shopper who spent the last two hours walking the aisles of the Habitat Restore in Vero Beach. Courtney, are you there? I'm here, Jerry, and I've already found enough bargains to rent a small truck. What? We sent you there to describe what shoppers can expect at the Habitat Restore. I know, but I can't help it. They have the greatest selection of all kinds of stuff. I've already found a cute dinette set for my apartment. Then I saw the most comfortable leather recliner for my husband. I've needed a set of dishes, and guess what? I found just the perfect pattern. You just never know what you're going to find because the inventory here changes daily. But you're supposed to be working. No law against having fun at your job. The Indian River Habitat Restore. 4580 North U.S. Highway 1 in Vero Beach is open to the public six days. Revenue generated at the Habitat Restore helps to build one in three Habitat homes in Indian River County. Shop, donate, volunteer at Habitat Restore in Vero Beach. Welcome to Vero Beach Cleaning, a complete home and office cleaning service that fits your needs and attends to your specific special instructions. Call now to schedule your free in-home estimate at 772-564-7839 or contact us through verobeachcleaning.com. 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 Very funny, Stu. No kidding. I'm Donna Roberts Mitchell, and Vero Beach Cleaning does my home every other week, and I love them. Vero Beach Cleaning. It's fun to visit Audrey's Feed and Tack, a distinctive country and western emporium. For Simply Southern Living, you'll find the finest in cowgirl couture. Styles that are uniquely Florida for the whole family. Upstairs in our boot room, you'll find Ariat, Dan Post, Laredo, and Ten Hall Boots. The biggest selection this side of the big lake. The freshest and finest feed hay and supplies for your chickens and horses and most other farm animals. Audrey's a great adventure. 66th Avenue and Oslo Road. Like us on Facebook. We're back to Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn. I'm your host, Nivia Torres, the executive director of KRC. And with me today in the studio is Colleen Phillips from the 211 Helpline. Colleen, we've learned so much. I'm having so much fun having this conversation with you. It's a very important conversation for our community. And you clarify the difference between 211 and 911. For, mm-hmm. So for the people who are tuning in, we need to understand that 911 is for a medical emergency or a crime situation, right? Mm-hmm, correct. And for those other situations where I'm feeling overwhelmed, I need support, I need to be connected to social service agencies, I can dial 211, but I can also chat with 211 or email 211, correct? Yeah, absolutely right. And text us. And text. Yeah. And text. And right before the break, you were explaining that there are a lot of youngsters who feel more comfortable with texting. This is a way to still get help if they're feeling depressed or anxious. Just send a text and absolutely. someone will respond. Yes, absolutely. We'll go right to our headquarters. Like I mentioned in Palm Beach County, it will pop up like an IM screen to our resource specialist and they can converse with you via the Internet. So text message through their phone or via the Internet that we have on our chat line on our website. Which brings me to another question. So most of the people who call 211 are not necessarily adults. You are getting calls or text messages from from teenagers, maybe even from, from children, correct? Absolutely. It's the whole age range that you can think of. So we do get calls from kids. We get calls from teenagers, adults, and also seniors, which is a growing population that mm-hmm. have been utilizing our services as well. And we actually have a, Z- a senior-specific program for them, too. So it really is every age range you can think of. And we are happy to assist anyone in the community with getting them the services and programs that they need to help. That's good to hear. So everyone in the community is getting served in one way or another. Absolutely. So, so let's talk then about the programs that you offer yeah so we have five programs at 211 i touched on two of them so we are that fundamental community helpline and crisis line so that's what all of our 211s across the united states will offer we also have four auxiliary programs that's especially for us here in the treasure coast and in palm beach so the first one is our help me grow um, pediatric initiative so what we do is for parents that have children from the age to zero to eight years old they may have questions about where their children are developmentally or behaviorally they can call us us anytime um, at our 211 helpline and be co- connected to a Help Me Grow specialist where we can do an ASQ screening, which is a nationally recognized um, screening, to be able to identify any of those early diagnoses for kids that are maybe on developmental you know, um, growth charts mm-hmm. and have any questions that we can answer for them and get them connected to community-based resources where appropriate. We- this is a very good program, Colleen, and 
you are a valuable partner to us at the Kindergarten Readiness Collaborative with the mm-hmm. 211 Help Me Grow program. And because it is so valuable and such an important program, we're going to have a show dedicated solely to 211 yes, Help Me Grow, correct? Absolutely. We will get our uh, resource people here in to talk about the data that we're seeing in this community and what we can do and get parents the help that they need for those youngsters that they have. Perfect. And your yep. other programs? Yeah. So we also have a senior wellness program, which mm-hmm. is our Sunshine Daily Reassurance phone call system. So what this is, is for seniors over the age of 60. We have our volunteers at our headquarters in Palm Beach call them every single day oh. on a time that they specify with okay. us. So it's between the hours hours to 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we call and give them a friendly hello. And we also check to check on their well-being. So making sure they're taking medications, that they're going to doctor's visits, that they've had a hot meal for that day. What we've noticed is that the seniors in the areas that we serve may be going through a time of isolation. Maybe they've recently lost a spouse or they're living alone on their own. It's a way for us to assess their needs and also give them that human interaction that they may be lacking in their community. Oh, I love hearing about that. So um, they have to actually call or maybe a daughter or son calls and sets up the the registration for them in this program. So again, they could go to our website, which Mm -hmm. is 211treasurecoast.org. If they do have adult children that live in the area or maybe out of state, this is a wonderful program for their aging parents. So again, if they can't check on them every day, they can get them signed up for this program and one of our volunteers will actually call them every day, which is great because on Christmas morning and you're not around with your family, you'll honestly have one of our representatives to say hello to you and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. So it's really a wonderful way. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a good thing for us to be able to assess their needs. And the great thing about that program too is that it's life-saving. So what we do is three wellness attempts for this call. So if Mr. Smith wants us to call every day at noon, we call Mr. Smith, he doesn't answer the phone, we will call a backup number, whether that's a neighbor, family member, someone that they've registered with us. That person hasn't heard from or spoken to Mr. Smith that day, we will call local law enforcement and they will do a physical wellness check on Mr. Smith's home. So to make sure if people aren't falling in their their bathtubs at home or they're in diabetic comas, we have found people from all walks of life that could have been in really catastrophic situations, that we are that first step to get them the care that they need, which we're really proud to offer. It's really something that is truly life-saving for our seniors in the community as well. That's really powerful, Colleen. Now, I just want to clarify that 211 Sunshine, yes. correct? 211 Sunshine is available for residents of the Treasure Coast. Absolutely. It might not necessarily be available for other residents in Florida? Yes. So that is the one thing with 211. So fundamentally across the nation, we are the community helpline and crisis line. You can certainly reach us any time of the day or night. However, our advocacy programs like our Help Me Grow and the Sunshine program I'm speaking to now may not translate to other parts in the country. So if you live in Columbus, Ohio or Minneapolis, Minnesota, and you're looking for that Sunshine program, you will have to call them and ask if they do offer that. So different 211s may have different advocacy programs across the nation so for us locally that's one that we do offer okay and I just want to clarify that for our viewers and listeners if you do reside in the Treasure Coast Mm -hmm. you can definitely participate in this two-on-one sunshine you absolutely can because we are the five county region area okay now if you go north again to that Brevard 211 or south to Broward or Miami Dade it's going to be a little bit different you'd have to call them but for our Treasure Coast residents and our Palm Beach residents 100% you can get um, signed up for that sunshine program and any of our auxiliary programs okay great so but then we We have the Sunshine, the Help Me Grow. We have two more. So we now have a disaster distress helpline, which is great. You know, obviously, as we are in hurricane season currently, if there's any um, community members that have maybe not gone through a hurricane before or maybe feeling anxious or having that anxiety around how do I prepare for this storm or what am I going to do? I feel so stressed. They can call us and ask for our disaster distress helpline. We can alleviate any anxieties that they're feeling, helping them prepare for a storm, let them know that they're in an evacuation zone or where their nearest safe zone are and then the last program we have is a senior or I'm sorry is a veteran specific support line so now we can have veterans in the community that are looking for VA programming or different programs that are veteran specific they can call and talk to one of our retired veterans to get those community resources located for them which is really wonderful so we now have the two representatives that have walked the walk they've talked the talk they are retired veterans that can now really identify and help them obtain the services that they need and it's time for us to serve them as Absolutely. they served our country so well. Absolutely, Colleen, this has been a thoroughly enjoyable conversation for me, and I've learned so much. We have to have you back, and we're certainly going to dedicate a show to 211 Help Me Grow. Thank you for it. joining me today. Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate your help. Thank you. And until next time, this has been Moonshot Radio, where every moment is an opportunity to learn.